The president may be one of the few people in America who believes there were three million of his voters who weren't counted or that three million illegal people voted. I could just tell you uh, that that is a bizarre theory, and now he's created a commission to go pursue it. Uh, he's put in charge of that commission a man named Chris Kobach, who's well known on Capitol Hill. He's a hair on fire conspiracy theorist. He's going to find something somewhere. Luckily, a lot of states, up to 43, have told them to put their request where the monkey put the peanut. They're going to protect the integrity of their voter files, and I stand behind those who uh, have taken that position. How are the dollars of the U.S. taxpayers? Who pays? for something like this? It's an executive commission. Uh, it was created by statute. I don't know who's paying. It must come out of the White House budget. Uh, but let's be honest about this. When they did an official survey to see how honest American elections were since 2010, they said a billion votes were cast, one billion. They found 31 cases of voter fraud. The president here has sent this commission out to find some unicorns. They're not going to find it. All right, I want to go back to what we were trying to discuss earlier, the previously undisclosed meeting between President Trump and Vladimir Putin during the G20. What is your take on this dinner? Lindsey Graham had said, listen, it's just a chit-chat. It's an aside. Others have said the same. There was a lot of world leaders there. What do you think? Well, I don't know. And the fact is, when the president met uh, with the foreign minister of Russia and the uh, ambassador in the Oval Office, you'll, if you'll remember, he asked the American press to leave. He said the Russian press can stay, and they stayed and covered it. Now we have a meeting between the president and Vladimir Putin where the only witness appears to be a Russian translator. Uh, I don't know what transpired. It could have been historic. It could have been just table talk. We don't know because it wasn't treated uh, as it should have been in a formal fashion. Now, whether they should or they shouldn't, many Americans say Russia is not my concern. My taxes, my health care are. But the president is going to be having lunch in just a short while with Republican senators after four of them said they were against Mitch McConnell's latest proposal to repeal only. You can see they're getting ready to have that lunch now. But the president said something yesterday that stuck out to me. As the president of the United States, he said, let's let Obamacare fail. And if it does sit as it is, and if the government pulls subsidies for the insurance companies, and those insurance companies then have to raise premiums, and some of the poorest people in America will not be able to afford health care, what is your response to a president who's saying, let's let Obamacare fail? This is an irresponsible position to take. This isn't forfeiting a softball game. It isn't failing to eat your peas on your plate. It is saying to a lot of helpless and people who are in desperate need, you're on your own. We don't care if you have health insurance. We don't care if you get the health care that your family needs. No president should ever say that. The fact is the president and the Republican Congress now have the responsibility for health care in America. They cannot find a way to repeal and replace what I suggest to them, something radical. Why don't we sit down together, Democrats and Republicans, work out the weaknesses and pre repair the things that need to be repaired in this system. But to walk away from it and say we're going to let it fail is to turn your back on your responsibility to the American people. I know you've got to go, Senator, but you've been in Washington a whole lot longer than the president has. Put the president and his tweets and his bluster aside. Are you having face-to-face, sit-down conversations with Republicans, those, you've, you, those who you've worked with for decades on repairing health care? Yes, and I think many of them are ready to step up. In fact, I don't understand why Senator McConnell won't make this a more public effort so the American people know exactly what the Republicans are proposing. Doing this in secret and private, springing it on the American people and saying we'll have a vote in a few days, later on we'll analyze what this bill actually does, that isn't the way the Senate always operated. I hope Senator McConnell will get back to the regular order of things. Let's have some committee hearings. I trust his chair. I trust my colleagues. We can get to the bottom of the best thing to do to keep this health care system strong. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.